Hello, my 3D printing peeps. I am here lying on the floor in my printing room with this gigantic Ender 5 Plus. Maybe it has something to do with this thing being a nightmare to carry down two flights of stairs into my little mini studio. This is the gigantic Creality Ender 5 Plus. We are going to change this cheap plastic extruder and this cheap white Bowden tube and replace them with an all metal Creality branded extruder and the Creality branded Capricorn Blue PTFE Bowden tube. If you have a machine that came with a plastic extruder and a white Bowden tube, such as an Ender 3 Pro, Ender 3 version 2, and several other Creality and non Creality machines, I highly recommend you do this upgrade and replace both of these parts because they will fail. Here we are looking at the hot end of the Ender 5 Plus, which looks suspiciously like the Ender 3 Pro. To do that, we will be removing this bolt and this blue clip. To remove the blue clip, just simply grab your finger and pull it off. If you'd like, you can remove the BL touch or CR touch wire and shift it out of the way. Next, we are going to remove this bolt. To do that, we need to heat up our hot end. There are a variety of firmwares in use on the Ender 5 Plus today, so use your firmware to preheat the nozzle. Once your nozzle is warmed up, you are simply going to use this wrench that came with your printers, or a similar wrench, as long as it fits on this nut. Slide the wrench over the nut and gently pop it loose. As we get close to unscrewed, I want you to pinch the tube right here and pull upward. Give it a firm upward pull and a slight wiggle. Once the tube comes up, just keep going and it's out. Now I'll go ahead and turn the machine off. I am not a fan of these couplers. I like to consider them single use, but if you'd like to remove it, Simply pinch the white ring together and push the tube through. And there you have it. You've separated the coupler for reuse, which I do not recommend unless you do not have a new one. Speaking of new one, at this point, I want you to open up your bag of parts that came with the metal extruder and open up your Bowden kit. In that Bowden kit, you will find a brand new hot end coupler. Take that coupler and screw it fully in to the top of the hot end. Use the same little wrench and snug it up. It's great to do this while the hot end is still warm. Moving along, we need to get this old Bowden tube off. So you are going to look in the tubing for little zip ties. Take your clippers and snip the zip tie off the Bowden tube. Look down the wire and you'll notice there's another zip tie. Cut that one off too. Then simply grab the Bowden tube and pull it out of the protective hose. Flop it around the back and shift your eyes to the extruder. We won't be using this white Bowden tube anymore, so we are going to leave it attached and remove the entire extruder in one piece. I am going to use the Allen keys that came with the machine. Right here in the arm of the extruder and unscrew it. Right here in the corner of the extruder. Take this tensioner screw and back it out completely. These two screws on both sides of the extruder. Now, before you remove the final screw, you need to reach behind the machine and hold on to the stepper motor. Back out the final screw and the extruder and stepper motor will both separate from the bracket. Be very careful, the stepper motor is attached. Place it down gently on your print bed. You may recognize these pieces. They are simply metal versions of what we just removed. 
To get started, we are going to build some of this extruder off the machine. We will start with this bearing, this screw, and this lock washer. The lock washer goes on the screw, the bearing goes on the lock washer. Pick them up together and screw it in right there. It's not going to screw a whole bunch. You're just going to give it a turn. It's going to snug up and your bearing will stay in place. Next up, we're going to take the coupler and screw it into the extruder. But I just went hand tight because there's no real turning or pushing and pulling pressure on this coupler and I want to be able to remove it easily if I'm dealing with a filament feed issue. This little guy goes right here into the arm of the extruder. You can go until it stops. Its main purpose is for the spring to have something to stay put on. Now it's time to mount the extruder on this bracket. Place the motor here in the hole with the wire facing down and sandwich the bracket between the extruder with the coupler facing up. The first thing we want to do is keep this thing in place. So we will drop our first screw in the bottom left corner. Make sure you use the screw that has a slight V in the bottom. It will sit flush in the hole. And now your motor and your extruder will stay put while you work. Next up is these two little guys in the back. And now we are going to put our extruder arm on. This is the trickiest part and it's also very important so don't rush it. It goes right here. And we are going to put a long hex screw through it. And this is the most important part of the entire gig, the tension spring. I want you to take the spring and put the stopper inside of it. I want you to then take this and place it over the screw and work it down and under the tension screw. We will then feed the tension screw from the top into that little spring plunger. Once you feel the tension begin, you know you've reached the bottom of that plunger and it's now pushing against the spring. We're gonna stop right there. That's almost too much in my opinion already. The more you screw this, the tighter it gets. And that tension puts pressure against the gear and the bearing on the filament to allow that gear to move the filament. We do not need an insane amount of pressure, just a firm pressure. And there you have it, the extruder is installed. Next up is the Bowden tube. We are simply going to take the tube and in one motion, push it all the way down until it stops. And once it stops, it's done. It's not going to come back out. Depressing this ring will retract the teeth and in theory, allow you to pull out this tube. So we are going to stick this underneath the ring to stop that from happening. Next up, I want you to grab this tool and this tool only or a similar tool meant for flush cutting tubes, such as a PEX cutter. Do not use your clippers or anything else. They will crimp the tube. Take your original tube, hold it against the new one and check the length of that tube. Once you have that length, take this clipper, put it inside, and clip it. You should have a clean, 
slush flawless cut. I'll give you a little trick if you are concerned about cutting it. Take the cut piece and put it into your extruder instead, putting the factory cut piece into the hot end since the piece in the extruder doesn't have to be perfect, but the piece in the hot end absolutely must be clean and flush. Speaking of the hot end, all you are gonna do now is take your tube, line it up in the hole, and push it all the way down until it stops. You will take that same blue stopper clip and snap it under the ring. Put your probe wire back on, you can now take this plastic tubing and work your Bowden tube. Into it. To help it stay put, take a small zip tie and put it around the cover. And there you have it, you've installed the all-metal Creality Extruder and the blue Capricorn PTFE tube.